Hey folks, welcome to another segment of Game Over Outdoors. Today is December 20th, 2020, and I'm just out scouting a property that I haven't really pressured much this year. Uh, we've finished up the West Virginia firearm season for bucks, and uh, today is the closing date for the muzzleloader season. So uh, beyond this point, the only bucks taken is going to be with a stick and string. So I'm trying to close the deal on a second uh, mature buck here in the late season. Uh, mentioning the second buck this year, I'm going to take you to my story today about Phenom, uh, a buck I identified last year as a two-year-old, uh, 10 point, had an excellent frame on him, low 100s deer as a two-year-old, and um, as his stature as a two-year-old, I decided to call him Phenom. Um, this is kind of a milestone deer for me. Not only was he right up there with my personal best buck, but he was also the first deer I've taken from a tree stand since my accident around five years ago. I, I fell from a tree stand. Uh, after work one day I was climbing and you know rush home from work and but I, you rush home from work so you can take your time getting in the stand and um, I was all the way to the top uh, screw in step and it popped out on me and I, I took a fall that I couldn't catch myself on and ended up landing straight on my back. I actually got lucky. I mean, a lot of people don't walk away from that. Um, I know every time I hear a story about it, I just, I shudder and I, I'm grateful for how, how fortunate I was. But um, I ended up breaking a, a vertebra and getting a gash across the back of my knee and requiring 16 stitches. It was a pretty bad experience. It had me down for a while. Uh, a couple years after I got back into the game, I was out. I was out for a while. Um, just that that incident just didn't have me in the hunting mindset. But uh, a couple years later, I took a took two bucks. Uh, really got the blood pumping again for it. And this year was special though because this was the first deer I've taken from a tree stand since the accident. So this this buck will forever hold a special place in my heart. Um, so stick with us and watch how the story of Phenom unfolds. In the summer of 2018, I was setting up a stand to target this deer that we named Minus One. He was a nine point, missing a brow tine. He was a four and a half year old deer. And we actually ended up not seeing that deer during daylight during that season. So the following season, I decided to change the setup slightly. Uh, the area I was in, it had just this swirl of wind regardless of the conditions that it was just so inconsistent. It made it tough to go in there and feel confident. Uh, so in 2019, I decided to move the stand about 50 yards down the uh, point from where I was at on that ridge, and it seemed to give me a more consistent wind. But in the process of targeting minus one and setting up for him, it allowed me to be in a good position for the 2020 season when I decided to start targeting this buck that I ended up naming Phenom in 2019. Normally coming from the bottom, and there's a 
highway coming from the bottom up to my bench and they branch out from there in the evening it's just the opposite they come from over here in the bedding area and come down and kind of stage in here for a while before they trek it down to the hay field and the, for the evening feed out in the field so The evening started off with some activity from a young buck and a mama doe and her little one, which was actually probably the smallest fawn that I've seen this late in the season up to this point in my hunting career. Um, as the temperature started to drop and we got a steady breeze, the deer activity started to pick up and we got a visit from an up and comer we named MJ after a, a deer that my cousin shot last season we named muley he had just this large frame that just reminded you of a mule deer more than a whitetail and mj was sitting as a two-year-old about the same same size as muley was and actually a little bit more ideal of a frame he actually had both of his brow tines You'll see MJ and this little fawn get a little jumpy and you'll see a six point come into frame here. Uh, they actually weren't clear in the area for that six point, but rather who was with him. Um, Phenom was in a group of three bucks. One actually didn't enter the frame, but they, they saw him coming in. And the, you know, the tension started running high in there and he come in and established his dominance. He hit that scrape that was 17 yards from the stand and uh, rubbed a tree before entering the frame. Uh, I didn't get the footage of him coming into the scene for the fact that all those deer that were crossing the ridge were eye level with me where my stand was and I wasn't going to risk getting caught by either the deer that are already in front of me or any of the bucks that were traveling with Phenom or Phenom himself. So I left the camera where it was and waited for the opportunity at the shot.
sure that was game over there. Man, he was cutting it close down to the last second. <sighs> That's the 11 point we've been watching all summer. And uh, we let him pass last year. He was either a, a decent three and a half or a really good two, two and a half last year. And uh, we saw him come out in velvet this year. My gosh, he blew up. And uh, that, that sucker came in 15 yards beside me from where he come from the other night on my first set in the stand, and he just come in five minutes too late. And he was almost there again today. Whew, gosh. The blood. Oh, right here. Uh, There's more. He's piled up right here. <laughs> oh. There he is. There he is. All right. Yeah, look at that. Oh, this is kind of steep. It is. It's fine. We'll get over by this tree, Joe. All right. They're knocking on his door. Wow. Yeah, that's the best one yet, buddy. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh. Oh, my. Get in there, big. I don't know, maybe. That's a long way up. All right, here he is. Uh, this is the evening of October 1st. Um, I actually uh, fudged the deer a couple nights ago and I was going back in hopes that I'd see him again and another one of the target bucks showed up. This uh, nice 11 point. Uh, I've been watching him for a couple years now. Um, he was a solid 10 point last year. We decided to put him on the uh, the no the no go list, but uh, I've been we getting a lot been getting a lot of trail camera pictures of him this year, and uh, I've had him right before dark several nights in a row. So I decided to set up on him tonight, and he showed up with about 15 minutes of shooting light left. Uh, he come in oh, around uh, seven o'clock and finally offered me a shot at about 10 after, but he come in on the path that I walked in and. I already had several bucks on top of me and I couldn't do much camera work. Luckily I had it set up to where the shot was going to take place. So I did get the shot on film. But he come in with two other bucks at once and uh, he kind of bullied the others around. He, he hit, a, hit a scrape and rubbed a tree before he came into my shooting lane. and uh, I took the first opportunity I got. He did look up at me after I drew, but he settled back down. And I, I was able to get a slightly quarter two shot on him, double lung. Uh, he probably wouldn't have gone very far had it not been going downhill, but I think momentum got the better of him there. And he went all the way down to the bottom of the hauler, so we had a fun drag. But that was a great experience, and I couldn't be more happy with this buck.